there are pipes everywhere. You almost can't play any game without seeing some pipes somewhere. There are pipes in Dishonored. Pipes in Wolfenstein. Pipes in The Division. Pipes in Hitman Absolution. Pipes in Mirror's Edge. And the list can go on and on. I became obsessed with pipes about five years ago when I first played through Mirror's Edge and just saw the pipes in the game. And from that day, I wanted to create my own set of modular pipes from scratch by myself and learn the process of how to do so. This way I can replicate it and create any type of modular pipe from that point on. I did start the project back in 2013, but unfortunately, I never finished it. And that pipe obsession never went away. I was constantly reminded by the pipes that I would see in games I played, artwork I saw, and when I would go outside. And I reached a point where I had enough. I couldn't take it anymore, and I needed to finish the projects I started, especially for something that I've spent so much time learning and obsessing about. And after I reached that point, I forced myself to finish the project. I ended up creating 32 modular pipes assets across three different sizes. Large pipes, medium pipes, and small pipes. And in this tutorial, I'm going to give you 32 lessons I learned from creating 32 modular pipe assets. Now, before we get started, I do have a full tutorial series for how to model, UV, texture, and start using the 32 modular pipe assets from scratch by yourself. It's 9 hours long, everything is narrated, everything is explained in a step-by-step -step manner, it includes all the project files, and you get to learn the entire process yourself. And you can go to this link or click on the link in the description and download it today. There will also be a link in the blog post. And if you're going to be creating game environments, you're going to have to learn and know how to create modular pipes. So lesson number one. Pipes need to be modular. They need to snap together to construct a variety of configurations and different networks. To make this happen, three things you must keep in mind. Each pipe has to be created on the grid, you must control pivot points, and you have to test the pipes before committing to the final set for modeling. Now of course, sometimes you'll have a unique set of pipes that won't be reused anywhere else and they won't be modular with any other pipe. But if you want to have high level of reusability, the pipes have to be modular. Every single one of them has to work with each other. Lesson number two. You will need three different pipe sizes. Large, medium, and small. For maximum reusability and variety, you should create three different pipe sizes. Large pipes, medium pipes, and small pipes. And you should be able to juxtapose all three different pipe sizes together within a single scene and within a single view. Having these three different sizes will give you the most flexibility out of your modular pipes, so you can use them in a variety of different environments. Lesson number three. Determine pipe sizes and dimensions early. Figure out what pipe sizes you need and what their dimensions are going to be before starting to work on them. For this, you want to spend a couple of hours doing some modeling tests. Open up Maya or whichever modeling software you're using and just start getting a sense for different pipe sizes, dimensions, and proportions. Decide on a standard you're going to use for the rest of the project and that every pipe is going to follow. For example, for large pipes, I decided to have a radius of 50, subdivision axes at 24, and for straight pipes, the length at 500 for the largest pipe and 200 for the smallest pipe. For 90 degree turn pipes, I decided to have eight segments. This creates a nice smooth curve that looks good 
and isn't too high poly. But to get these values, I had to test and go through a lot of throwaways before reaching on the numbers that I'm going to use. Also use a human reference scale inside your 3D modeling software to judge proportion. A simple box will do. In my LT, I used a box with the width and depth set to 60 and height set to 180. And I also exported these simple meshes to Unreal Engine 4 for early in-game testing because you can never be too sure until you test scale, dimension, and proportion in-game from the player's point of view. Then once you're happy with their sizes, it's time to begin modeling. Lesson number four. A war on specific styles and creating highly reusable pipes. The more unique you make your modular pipes, adhering to a specific style, the less adaptable they can be for other projects. I wanted to reuse these modular pipes, not just in one project, but in many others. For example, in Dishonored, the art style is very specific and very stylistic. The pipes here are less adaptable to other game projects, unless they're using the same art style. While in Battlefield 3 and 4, the art style is more realistic. Pipes in these games are something you might see in everyday life. So this makes them highly reusable and flexible, not just in Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 games, but in other similar environments. So I decided to create clean, modern, and semi-realistic pipes you would see in everyday life to make them extremely versatile to be reused. And the art style of the pipes will depend on the environment you are creating. The style is decided ahead of time, but the process to create them will be the same. You will still need the same set of modular pipes. You will need straight, angled, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, 180, three-way and the four-way pipes, and so on. Lesson number five. Use the bridge tool for 90 and 45 degree angle pipes. Position two straight pipes like this. The distance between them is where the curve will be created. For a wider angle, position them further apart, and for a tighter angle, position them closer. Then combine these two objects into one, then select edges on both of the pipes or the faces. Go to Edit Mesh and choose Bridge. Set Curve Type to Blend and give sufficient amount of segments. As I mentioned before, I chose 8. You can then delete the geometry for the two straight pipes, leaving you with the 90 degree or the 45 degree turn. Lesson number six. Use booleans to create three and the four-way pipes. Position two pipes to overlap each other in a three-way or four-way formation like so. Select both pipes and go to Mesh, Booleans, Union. You will now have your three-way or four-way pipe, but you will still need to clean up your geometry as there will be some overlapping vertices on top of each other. So you'll just need to go through and merge them. Lesson number seven. Model the pipe caps and the pipe bolts separately. I ended up creating nine large pipes, nine medium pipes, and nine small pipes. Each of these pipes has a pipe cap. If I had to model each pipe cap and UV it separately, it would have taken a long time, but that's unnecessary. To speed this up, model one pipe cap and duplicate it for all of the other pipes. The important part of this is that the pipe cap must match the pipe cylinder so they can be merged together later. So the way I did this is I created the pipe caps from the cylinder by inserting edge loops, extruding, and then separating so I can UV it and then duplicate it for the rest of the pipes. Lesson number eight, create pipe supports. Pipes by themselves will get you pretty far, but for longer and taller pipe network configurations, you will need pipe supports to help distribute their weight. I created two supports for large pipes, 
two supports for medium pipes and one for small pipes. I had to plan and test at what height to create these supports and how they can be reused. I created large pipe supports that can be used as two different height variations with the same mesh. And I could also reuse the same pipe supports from the walls or from the ceiling, so they don't always have to be used on the ground. For medium pipes, I created a ground support, and then one support that can be used from the ceiling or from the walls. And for small pipes, I created one pipe support that can be used from the ceiling or from the wall. Lesson number nine. Modeling the medium pipe and the small pipe valve. The valve was the most time consuming to model in this project, but it's not as difficult as it seems. The trick was to break down the reference into simple geometric shapes, then model those shapes one at a time. All these separate shapes were then combined into one object. I also included the pipe cap that was created earlier, so this valve could be attached to any pipe. Then once I had the medium valve modeled, I duplicated it and resized it to match the proportions for the small pipes. I also moved the UVs from the medium valve and from the small valve to have their own unique space. So I only had to model one, which then was duplicated and reused, and this saved me some time. Lesson number 10. Use Shift D to create repeated patterns. Useful technique to create very precise repeated patterns is to duplicate with transform. And this is what I did for the bolts. I created one bolt, placed it where I want it, then pressing Shift D to duplicate with transform. Then I rotated it 45 degrees and then continued to press Shift D to duplicate at a 45 degree increment until I had exact same spacing for all the bolts around the pipe cap. And you can do this with scale, you can do this with transform, and you can do this with rotate. Very useful technique, and this will allow you to create very quick architectural patterns. Lesson number 11, control your edges. Soften versus harden edge. You must control edge quality of your geometry. Is it a soft edge or is it a hard edge? Soft edges will give you smooth shading on your meshes, while hard edges will give you hard shading on your meshes. To set edges, select the edges, go to Mesh Display, and choose Soften or Harden Edge. You may also want to enable Toggle Soft Edge Display by holding down Shift, right click Hold, go to Soften Harden Edges, and select Toggle Soft Edge Display. The edges you set will directly translate to UE4. And of course, you have to export with smoothing groups and smooth mesh enabled. Lesson number 12. Add more variation to pipe caps for realism. For maximum reusability and modularity, I chose to have the pipe bolts appear the same on all the pipes. The player is unlikely to notice or care that much if the bolts and the lugs don't appear like they do in the reference here. But if you want more realism, then you'll have to create additional pipe cap variations. I did test out a few. Also, you can go a step further and increase adding more detail by creating a space between the pipes like so, which actually looks really good. So whatever you decide to use, you'll just have to plan ahead of how you're going to use it and how many different variations you're going to include. In the end, I went with a simpler version of the pipe caps. Lesson number 13. Bake normal maps right inside Maya LT or Maya for great results. Maya LT's Turtle Baker does a really good job for baking normal maps. Doing this saves a lot of time than trying to bake it in an external software 
such as X-normals, especially when there are so many different static meshes. The high poly versions were created using subdiv modeling, so I didn't have to sculpt anything in Modbox or ZBrush. And the art style of the pipes I was going for, no sculpting was needed. The baked normal maps were then also used as the input map for endo and dedo texturing. Lesson number 14. UV, then duplicate. Once you model the pipe caps, the next step is to begin UVing. You also have to do the UVing part before baking normal maps. What you don't want to do is to UV each pipe cap for every pipe. For me, that would have been a total of 54 pipe caps to UV. Instead, UV one pipe cap and then duplicate it for the rest of the pipes. This way, the UVs will overlap and share the same texture. I did this with the pipe caps and the pipe bolts. I created one, unwrapped it, and then duplicated it. Although this doesn't allow for unique detail in each pipe cap, it does save on UV space and having to repeat the UV in process for every pipe cap. You could at that point lay out the UVs differently and give each pipe cap the unique UV space. And for that you just have to decide what's more important to you. So you could determine the pros and the cons depending on your project, what do you want, and what are you willing to give up. Lesson number 15. Maintain correct texel density between all pipe sizes. I have three different pipe sizes and a total of 32 meshes. All these pipes can be used together within one environment and within one view. For this to work, you have to maintain the same texel density between all the pipes. And texel density is the size or resolution of a UV shell. You have to keep each UV shell size across all static meshes the same. You could have slight size difference, but nothing too extreme. Otherwise, the player will be able to notice that the texture resolution between different pipes doesn't match. To match all the UV shells to the same texel density across every mesh, inside the UV editor, select a UV shell, under Transform tab, click Get to collect the value of texel density for that selected shell. Then select another UV shell, and you can select more than one and click set to apply the value from get. The UV shell will now have the same texel density as the one you chose to get from. Do this for all of your UV shells to maintain a consistent texel density. Lesson number 16. Quick way to UV any modular pipe. UVing can be very time consuming and tedious. Well, it was. Within the last couple of years, UV editing tools have been improved dramatically. In fact, what used to take me hours, now it takes me minutes. No plugins, no scripts, just the default UV tools that come with Maya LT and Maya. I used the following method. I would project on a specific axis, on X, Y, or Z. Then I would select edges where I want to make a cut and it will determine where the texture seam is going to be. And then after I made all the cuts, run unfold or unfold along U or V. Also running straighten shell or straighten UVs will also help. And with just a few clicks, I was able to UV all the pipes relatively quickly. Lesson number 17. Combine all the pipes into one object for texturing in Quixel. I have large pipes and medium and small pipes that share the same texture. So it would help to see them being textured all at the same time without having to export them separately and texture one mesh at a time. Doing this wouldn't make sense and it would take too long. So I decided to combine all the pipes that share the same texture into one object, then export it to be used in Quixel. That way I will be able to see and texture all the pipes at once. Just remember, do not save your scene after combining and exporting, as this is only temporary and only used so I can export it for Quixel. Lesson number 18. 
Don't export as FBX for Quixel. When exporting a mesh for Quixel, use OBJ instead of FBX. Exporting as FBX will cause an error when you load that mesh in Quixel. The solution to this error is to export as FBX, but you would have to change the FBX version to 2013 or older. And instead, I export as OBJ using the following options. Enable smoothing and normals. And disable materials, point groups, and groups. And this loads up perfectly in Quixel. Lesson number 19. Quickly texturing in Quixel Didu. One of my biggest frustrations in roadblocks was texturing. I've started many projects that were never finished due to the lack of skill in UVing and then texturing. And texturing modular pipes with Quixel Didu and Endu was actually very quick and almost effortless. I used just a few layers to create a simple but good looking material, adjusted the scratches, roughness values, normal map intensity, then exported the textures using UE4 preset. Quixel Didu generated an albedo, roughness, metallic, and a normal map that were all physically correct and ready to be used in UE4. And when I used Quixel for the very first time, it was a bit cumbersome, as the interface is not something that you've seen before in other software. But with a bit of practice and knowing what to do, you can get started pretty quickly. And in the Modular Pipes tutorial series, I have a video that is completely dedicated to showing you a quick crash course for how to get started using Quixel Didu and texturing your modular pipes. Lesson number 20. Set up 3D for high quality preview. To see the best material preview on your meshes, use the following settings in 3D. Under post processing, enable 3 for clean highest quality, high quality resampling, Sharpness pre-pass, sharpness post-pass, screen space ambient occlusion, and simulate physical camera. These options is what I use to get the best preview of the textures and materials created in DDU. Lesson 21. Creating color ID map. Color ID map is how you texture parts of the mesh that require different materials in DDU. For 11 large pipe assets, I have three different materials or surface types to work with. One for painted pipe metal, one for the steel bolts, and one for the steel pipe support. Each of these materials require a different look. To do this in DDU, you need a color ID map, so Quixel can assign a specific material to certain parts of the mesh. You could bake this color ID map from Maya LT, Maya, or whatever 3D modeling software you're using or you can create it manually. I only have three different surface types, so I decided to create the color ID manually. In Photoshop, I marquee selected different parts of the UV layout for each surface type, for painted steel, for steel bolts, and for steel pipe supports, and filled them with a solid color, then exported this image as a target file. Then during the project setup in DDU, I assign the color ID, and then during texturing, I can apply specific materials to those specific color IDs, and DDU will do the rest. Lesson 22. Have all your pipes share the same texture. Having a set of meshes using the same texture will not only improve performance, but will make your job to texture them and creating materials a lot easier. I have 11 large pipe assets that share the same texture. Then I have medium and small pipes that also share one single texture. That's 21 meshes using one texture. That means for all 32 static meshes, I only have two sets of textures and two materials. And I could probably push this further to only use one master material. But for now, two materials is still pretty good. The way this works, is I unwrapped each mesh in my LT, then selected all the meshes I want to include in one texture sheet. Then inside the UV editor, I lay out all the UVs within 0 to 1 UV space for all selected meshes, 
as if they are a single object. I did the same for the medium and small pipes. Lesson 23. Disable sRGB option for metallic and roughness maps in UE4. Metallic and roughness textures have to be used in linear space. Right after you import these two textures, disable sRGB option in texture editor. Do this before using them in the material editor. This is especially important to make the roughness maps match what you saw in Dedu or Substance. Lesson 24. Create a light map channel to use pipes with static baked lighting. Light maps are used to display shadow and light information on your meshes after you bake lighting. If meshes don't have a light map UV channel, then after you bake your lights, you will get light and shadow artifacts. If you're going to use dynamic lighting, then you do not need light maps. You can generate light maps in UE4, and sometimes this will give you pretty good results depending on your texturing UVs, since UE4 uses your texturing channel to generate the light map channel. Sometimes this works, but sometimes it doesn't. For more consistent results, you should create a second UV channel inside your 3D modeling software and UV that object specifically for light maps. You may need to split some UV shells, separate others, and light map channel cannot have any overlap in UVs. You also have to make sure you have sufficient UV space padding between each shell. In Maya LT, if you go to UVs, then choose Copy UVs to UV Set, and then Copy into New UV Set. This will duplicate the texture UVs into a new channel, which will be used for light maps. And then you can unwrap it specifically for light maps, export it, and UE4 will use that channel for light maps. Lesson 25. Why your reimported light maps don't work. Light maps are created later in the process, but you usually export your meshes to be tested very early on, usually during blackout stage. When importing static meshes into UE4 for the very first time, I disable generate light maps. I don't want UE4 to generate them for me, and since I haven't created them yet, because it's too soon, I'm just testing. Then later on, when I end up creating the proper light map channel and UV specifically for light maps, I re-import the mesh to test it. But when I do that, the light maps won't work. You will still receive light map UVs are overlapping error. To fix this, you have to change the light map coordinate index to 1 for each static mesh. So inside the static mesh editor, under general settings, change light map coordinate index to 1. Bake lighting and your re-imported light maps will now work. Lesson 26. Using material instances for color and roughness changes. I wanted to have different color pipes just like in Mirror's Edge. White, red, blue, yellow, orange, and so on. You don't need to have a separate texture for each pipe color. All you need is a material instance. Right click on your material, choose material instance, and then apply this material instance onto the static meshes you want, and then adjust the color. Now of course you have to set this up inside the material editor, so UE4 knows what to change through the material instance. For color change, I used Blend Overlay node, combined with Albedo Texture, and a Constant 3 Vector node. You could also use Multiply instead of Blend Overlay. And I also set up a way to adjust and control the roughness of the pipes. Lesson 27. Reusing existing textures as masks. I had to mask out the bolts, valve rods, and pipe supports. So the color change and the roughness intensity from the material instance doesn't affect them. In my case, for large pipes, I was able to use the metallic texture as a mask. I plugged the red channel from the metallic input into the roughness setup using linear interpolate node and successfully masked the bolts, the valve rod, and the pipe supports 
from being affected by the material instance color change and roughness intensity. You may have to create a separate texture to use as a mask, but sometimes using metallic texture can work. And that's what happened when I used it for large pipes. In the case of medium and small pipes, metallic texture did not work. So for that, I did have to create my own custom mask. Lesson 28. Pack mask textures into RGB channels. Since I had to create my own custom mask to be used with medium and small pipes, I utilized channel packing. This means that when you create your mask, you place that mask texture into a single channel. That way, you can place up to four different masks into one texture. One into the red channel, one into the green, one into the blue, and one into alpha. Then in UE4, you would use individual channels for the mask you need. Now very important, when you import this mask texture into UE4, change the compression settings to masks no sRGB. Lesson 29. Create collisions in UE4 to save time. The time you spend on creating custom collisions in a 3D modeling software can add up, especially if you have a lot of static meshes. For many of these modular pipes, UE4 will create pretty good collisions right inside the static mesh editor. Under collisions, you can choose any of the available presets, but your best option is going to be outer convex collision. Here, you'll be able to adjust hull count, max hull verts, and hull precision. Play around with these settings until you find something that's not very complex while still maintaining its shape for proper collision. Then once you're done, save and test. Lesson 30. Creating custom collisions in Maya LT or Maya. Collisions created in UE4 will not always work. Sometimes you'll have to create more precise custom collisions inside your 3D modeling software. And I had to do this for quite a few pieces, such as the large pipe supports. Here are some guidelines I followed. For collision primitives, use simple geometric shapes, cubes, cylinders, spheres. These collision shapes must be closed, so that means you do not delete any faces and avoid extruding any geometry. These shapes must be convex and they cannot be concave. Place the collision primitives on top of your existing mesh, so it's overlapping. You must name these collision primitives and they have to keep the same name as your object with a proper prefix. The prefix that I used is UCX underscore and then name of the mesh. If you need multiple collision primitives, then add an underscore and a number at the end of the collision name. So for example, UCX underscore name of the mesh underscore zero zero. And then for the second collision primitive, you would change to zero one, zero two, and so on. And then you would select everything and export it as one object. And then UE4 will recognize the names of the object and the collisions and use those shapes as collisions. Lesson 31. Do tests and construct scenes with your assets. Once you have all your pipes created and imported into UE4, it's time to have some fun. Give yourself a few hours or a couple of days to experiment and get familiar with using modular pipes. First I created a simple BSP environment, then placed these pipes into it. I used BSP to block out to get a sense of space and scale. And then I inserted the pipes and positioned them around the environment. In the end, I could take this environment further, replace the BSP, add additional static meshes, and post-process the scene. And for the second scene, I used these modular pipes and the corridor project assets to create a small open set to get familiar with pipe configurations. Here I used the small and the medium pipes. And then for the third test, I used the modular pipes and included them in a completed daytime and nighttime scenes that were created during the Corridor Project tutorial series. 
all this got me familiar with using these pipes and see what I could do. And lesson 32, set up your project folders from the start to maintain high level of organization. Setting up a consistent and organized folder structure for all your project files will save you a lot of time as you work on your project. You will know where all your exported meshes are kept, where you should keep your saved textures, where to place your collected reference, and just where to store all your project related files. I have an ongoing system that I use to manage projects, although I am constantly tweaking and adjusting. What I do is I create one primary folder with the project name. Inside this folder, I create additional folders, each for specific software or topic. I create my LT folder. Here I keep all files related to my LT. Then I have texturing folder, where I keep all texture related project files. Then a reference folder and UE4 folder. So this really helps to maintain a good project organization where everything is kept in one place. I know where to find it and I know what to store and back up. So it's not spread out across multiple drives and multiple folder locations. So this was just a primer. The 32 lessons I learned as I worked on the modular pipes project. For a more step by step and in depth where everything is explained, narrated across 45 videos and 9 hours worth of tutorials on how to model, UV, bake normal maps, texture, export, import, and then use modular pipes from scratch to create environments with for your own projects. Then you need to buy UE4 modular pipes project. I've been creating tutorials since 2008, so I'm not going anywhere. And if you have any hesitations, I do want you to know that I offer 30 day money back guarantee. So if you don't like the tutorials, I will give you a full refund. And let's face it, if you're going to be creating environments, you're going to need to know how to create modular pipes. And there is finally a tutorial series just for you. And you will forever know and be able to create any modular pipes that you want. So learn how to create modular pipes today. There's going to be a link in the description box. And you can also find it on my website, worldofleveldesign.com.